Hey guys, it's virtual field trip time with Ms. Atkinson. Today, we are traveling from our Lone Star state of Texas by heading 2,000 miles east and visiting the historical and mystical town of Salem, Massachusetts. Salem is a historic coastal city in Essex County, Massachusetts, located in the North Shore region. Continuous settlement by Europeans began in 1626 and Salem would become one of the most significant seaports in early American history. Salem is a residential and tourist area that is home to the House of Seven Gables, Salem State University, Pioneer Village, the Salem Maritime National Historic Site, Salem Willows Park, and the Peabody Essex Museum. It features historic residential neighborhoods in the Federal Street District and the Charter Street Historic District. Much of the city's cultural identity reflects its role as the location of the infamous Salem Witch Trials of 1692, as featured in Arthur Miller's The Crucible. Police cars are adorned with witch logos. A public elementary school is known as Witchcraft Heights, and the Salem High School athletic teams are named the Witches. Gallows Hill was originally believed to be the site of numerous public hangings and is currently a park used as a playing field for various sports. Today, we will be touring the Jonathan Corwin House, also known as the Witch House. This property was once the home of Judge Jonathan Corwin and is still the only structure standing in Salem with direct ties to the Salem Witch Trials of 1692, as it is believed to have been built between 1620 and 1642. Corwin bought it in 1675 when he was 35, and he lived there for more than 40 years. The house remained in the Corwin family until the mid 19th century. It is located at 310 Essex Street at the intersection of North Street and Summer Street in the McIntyre Historic District. Corwin was called upon to investigate the claims of diabolical activity when a surge of witchcraft accusations arose in Salem Village, now known as Danvers, and neighboring communities. He took the place of Judge Nathaniel Saltonstall, who resigned after the execution of Bridget Bishop. Corwin served on the court of Oyer and Terminer, which ultimately sent 19 people to the gallows. The house is an excellent example of 17th century New England architecture, although historians are unsure of the date when it was built. The house was moved about 35 feet to its current location in the 1940s when the adjacent street was widened. It was restored to look as it would have in the 17th century and the gambrel roof was altered. It is now a museum operated by the city of Salem and is open seasonally. When we enter the witch house, we immediately come across a parlor or what we consider to be a living room area. Notice the beautiful brick masonry featured in the large fireplace towards the back of the room. Wood-burning fires were the only source of heating for the Puritans during the era. Next, we come across a dining room area with the original dining set that belonged to Judge Corwin and his family. As tempting as it may be, we ask that you do not touch the artifacts on your way through. As we take our tour, you'll notice the custom-designed woodmanship of the dining room furniture. These are model standard examples of the interior design trends for the 1600s. The golden accent pieces you see adorning this room in the form of goblets and charger plates are a symbol of the Corwin family's prestige. Cooking was at the heart of the kitchen and the fireplace here features all of the cast iron cookware that would have been used by the Corwin family. Next, we enter the chambers or bedroom suite. Please take note of the canopy style bed and the rocking infant crib. We have certainly come a long way in terms of sleep technology, especially for infants. When we move a little further, we can see a model of a gown that would have been worn by the lady of the house. Notice the very conservative styling of the dress. This is very reminiscent of the demure and modest fashion trends that were expected of women during the Puritan era. And that concludes our tour of the Witch House. I do hope that you enjoyed your look around the building and hope that you come back and visit again. Until next time, bye!